the concept of morphic fields supposes that self-organizing systems have an organizing field within and around them. There's a self, uh, I'm a self-organizing system, for example, and there's a field within and around my body which shapes my form, that shaped me as an embryo as I was growing. That I call a morphic field. Morphic comes from the Greek word morphe, meaning form or shape. Then I'm supposing in this hypothesis of morphic resonance that these morphic fields have a kind of memory built into them. So every organism tunes into a kind of collective memory of the species. So, for example, a squirrel would tune into the morphic fields of previous squirrels, and that would shape the way the squirrel develops and also give the squirrel its instincts. Now, morphic resonance, the process by which there's an influence from past squirrels to present squirrels, um, is non-local. It goes across space and time. It doesn't fall off with distance in space or time. So that's not localized, but the field through which it's expressed is localized. The squirrel field is within and around the squirrel. My field's within and around me. Um, so the memory part is the part that's non-local. In regular science, the role that morphic resonance plays is played by the laws of nature. Most scientists imagine that nature is governed by laws. These laws are invisible. No one's ever met a law of nature. Uh, uh, mathematical, transcendent, uh, they work in all places uh, and at all times. Um, they're invisible, elusive things. Um, morphic resonance is invisible too. Uh, the choice really is between morphic resonance and invisible memory principle in nature or laws of nature, um, invisible, transcendent, eternal governing principles of nature. I think in an evolutionary universe, morphic resonance makes more sense. It enables us to see the regularities of nature as more like habits uh, than like eternal laws.